Hello and welcome to this history skills video. Um, this time we're looking at um, types of essay question and how to decode what type of question it is. Um, the reason we're doing this is because the exam board has promised that um, essay questions in the exams will always be one of five types of question and that they're very keen that students think about the type of question so that they're answering precisely or as precisely as they can um, what it is that the examiner wants. So let's have a look at those five types now. Here are the five types of question that the exam board promises the essay will always be one of. Um, from the top, they are cause or consequence. Um, three and four are very similar, the change and continuity questions, similarity and difference questions. Uh, and then lastly, questions about significance. Um, we're going to have a look at some questions just to outline um, what uh, they might look like, but also to think about well, how does it change and impact upon how you might answer them. So here are three examples of cause questions from across the different routes. Um, different types of cause questions have different kind of trigger words in them. So these aren't a uh, comprehensive survey of them, but these are some ideas about the types of things you might uh, be asked to think about. So the first one, were the actions of Oliver Cromwell the main reason for the instability of Republican government? And there clearly you're looking at one reason and you're being asked to compare it to other reasons. Uh, the second question there, how far was Brezhnev responsible for the economic decline of the Soviet Union? And here again, you're being asked, is Brezhnev responsible or were there other things that were responsible for the economic decline? And, and then lastly here from Route A, Henry II was largely to blame for the outbreak of rebellion in 1173. How far do you agree with this statement? Is it Henry that was to blame or were other factors to blame for the outbreak of rebellion? So in a course question, fairly understandably, um, you're being given a factor almost always, and you're being asked to compare that factor to other factors that you yourself will need to think about. And for that reason, your essay should look something like this in terms of an overview structure. Obviously, you have an introduction at the start and a conclusion at the end. And in between, you'll be looking at those factors in turn and trying to weigh up how um, how much of the cause should be given to each factor. So you might say the given factor is massively responsible for it and the other factors are quite small in terms of their responsibility. Or you might say um, the main reason was not the given factor at all. It was the, the second factor that was much more important and the third one also played a role. Just a word on timing, um, you should certainly always have a second factor uh, in your question. The third factor you probably won't get to do in as much um, uh, in as much length or or depth because of timing, uh, and so don't leave your last um, factor to be your main factor. So there are cause questions. Um, secondly, then uh, consequence questions. Actually, consequence questions were uh, really rare so far, but they could always come up. But this one's fairly obvious in the way it's phrased. This is from the um, root C. Uh, Mao's China unit. How accurate is it to say that the main consequence, there's the clue, of the Cultural Revolution was the destruction of traditional Chinese culture? And now because we haven't seen other consequence questions, um, it's pretty tricky to tell you uh, what other types of consequence questions there are, but they're all going to flow out of this idea. They're going to uh, look at an event and ask what happened as a result of that. What were the main results of this or the main consequences of this particular thing that um, something um, like this happened. And you'll answer this in the same sort of way as the course questions. The given factor here is that the, uh, the main consequence of the, of the cultural revolution was the destruction of traditional Chinese culture, or was it something else? Um, the given factor is the destruction of tra traditional Chinese culture. Uh, you might say, actually, um, it was more important that Mao um, got back in power. That's um, a bigger consequence of the cultural revolution. So uh, change, cons uh, change um, sorry, cause and consequence questions uh, are the first two. Um, and then the third type are change and continuity questions. And obviously these look at whether things um, changed or stayed the same. There are different types of these here and they're all fairly obvious, but I'll sketch them out for you. And um, the first essay question, to what extent did the nature of kingship change during the reign of Henry II? Or it did change or it didn't change. How accurate is it to say that the social structure of Britain was transformed? Um, was it transformed or perhaps uh, you don't need to say it didn't change at all, um, but you might say that it, it changed a bit rather than being transformed. How far was government control over the lives of the people maintained 
in the years 1953 to 85, that's in the Soviet Union unit, um, maintained or not maintained. Um, it had been there before. It maintained as obviously continuity, or was there a change there with the control being less? Um, and then finally, how successful were government policies in promoting industrial development in the Soviet Union in the years 28 to 64? A success question is really asking about did things change? Were they successful in changing things or did they stay the same as in that they weren't very good? Now, a change continuity question will be approached slightly differently than the cause and consequence questions. And you'll end up with a structure that looks more like this. Again, of course, you've got your introduction and conclusion at the start and end of your essay. But in the middle, you'll probably just have two sections, one dealing with change and the other dealing with the continuity or the one dealing with transformation and one dealing with only minor alteration. Of course, within these um, two sections, you need to weigh up how significant the change was, how far reaching the change was as against the continuity. Um, and it's that analysis of how important the changes and continuity were that will lead you to your um, judgment in the end. And so the fourth type of similarity difference is really extremely similar to the change continuity questions, um, to the extent sometimes it's difficult to tell the difference between them. I don't think that matters too much. And um, there's a couple of examples here. To what extent was Republican rule different from the personal rule of Charles I? Now, Republican rule followed on from Charles I, so you could see this as a change continuity kind of thing, um, or a similarity difference was, was Republican rule similar or different uh, to the rule of Charles I. Um, you would approach that in exactly the same way as the change continuity question with a section on similarities and a section on differences. And then um, uh, very much the same. How accurate is it to say that Soviet leaders in the years 53 to 85 pursued similar policies on religion? And, and I guess here uh, you've actually only got two leaders in that period, but you could get a bunch of leaders across the thing and you'd be asking oh, which ones are similar and which ones are different to each other. And again, you'll deal with that similarities first and, and then differences and then uh, on the way through trying to start weighing up. Are the similarities more important or are the differences more important? Um, and then finally, uh, significance. Uh, significance is the um, the uh, most tricky, I think, of the um, question types to spot. <laughs> Although, of course, we haven't seen many consequence questions, but uh, it's tricky because there's not so much of a, uh, an obvious pattern to answering it. But here are three questions that are about significance, and um, we'll pick out just one or two things um, about what you would expect from a significance questions. Um, clearly, the word significant in the title of the question is a helpful indicator that this is a significance question. So the first one there, how significant was the role of the East India Company in the expansion of overseas trade in the years 1625 to 88? Um, here, uh, well, 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 we'll deal with that and then we'll come back to we'll come back to the other two. Or sorry, we'll read the other two and then we'll, we'll come back to why they're um, how you'd approach them. So secondly, the murder of Thomas Beckett had little impact on the development of church and state relations blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then uh, how far degree? And then finally, how far degree that in the years 49-62, communal living was more beneficial than harmful to Chinese peasants. So in each of the cases here with significance, they're asking you to judge whether a particular event or person uh, or in if the start thing, a company um, is significant or how significant they were for a particular thing. So uh, there in the first and very obvious, how significant was the role of the East India Company? in the expansion of overseas trade. Um, and then the second one about the development of church relations. And the third one um, was slightly different, isn't it? In the first two, it's not a change continuity question in that overseas trade did expand. And in the second one, the development of church state relations, well, they got worse. So it's not about continuity or change. It is about uh, judging whether this particular thing was important in that or not. And so what that means is actually that you can approach it either way. You can approach it to say, yes, the murder of Thomas Beckett had a massive impact on the development of church and state relations. Look at the significance of it. Look at how important it was. And then in the second half of your um, essay, you could say, well, actually, yeah, Thomas Beckett uh, murder had very limited impact because of this and this. Look and see how things, uh, for instance, Henry um, wasn't excommunicated. It didn't really impact that much on church and state relations. 
On the other hand, and you can do that with the East India Company and communal living. On the other hand, you could suggest in a significance question that, uh, for instance, the East India Company was significant in the expansion of trade, but you could suggest that other things were more significant in the expansion of overseas trade. And so the significance question can be approached either way, either as looking for and against or by looking at it as a factor question. Um, so they're a bit trickier to pick out. But uh, just to recap, there are five types of questions, uh, cause and consequence, uh, which are always a factor led questions, a given factor, and you compare it to two others. Change and continuity, similarity and difference questions, which will always be those four against questions. Things did change or didn't. They were similar or they were different. Um, and then finally, the significance questions, which could go either way, but will hone in on a particular um, thing or person or event and ask you to weigh up the significance of that in the, con in the context of the course that you've looked at. So I hope that's helpful. Um, and I'd really encourage you to go away and look at some questions um, in your own units that you're studying and see if you can get to grips with them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.